Hello Grade 11s and welcome to today's video on revising Grade 10 functions. Before we begin, it is important that we understand the definition of a function. Many learners think that a function is another word for graph, but not every graph is a function. To understand this, let us look at the definition of a function. Remember, a function is a relationship between two variables. One variable is the input and the other is the output. For every input value, there can only be one corresponding output value. The input is also known as the dependent variable. The output value is also known as the independent variable. Would you believe me if I told you that we have been doing functions since you were in primary school? Let me remind you of something. I'm sure this looks familiar. Teachers may have used math machines, ladybugs, or a spider sum. This is an example of a function. For fun, let us fill in the answers. Remember, a function is a relationship between an input and its output value. Here the input values are 2, 4, 6, and 8, and their corresponding output values are 6, 8, 10, and 12. We can describe the relationship between the two variables as the output variable is 4 greater than the input value. So, did we do functions in primary school after all? We can represent the spider flow diagram in a table form, as an equation, as a graph, or as a description in words. And because the flow diagram represents a function, the other representations are also functions. From this we can see that a graph is just one of the many ways of representing a function. In grade 10 you learned several different ways to represent functions. We can represent a function by an equation such as y equals 3x plus 4. Or we can represent a function by functional notation, which we read as f of x equals 3x plus 4. Lastly, we can represent a function by mapping notation. We read this as f such that x is mapped onto 3x plus 4. When working with any section of mathematics, there is always important terminology that must be understood, and this section on functions is no different. Firstly, let's revise what we mean by axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the line of symmetry where the graph is a mirror image of itself. The function is a mirror image of itself about the line of symmetry. Now let's look at the word asymptote. An asymptote is an imaginary line that a graph approaches but never touches this line or crosses it. Because an asymptote is an imaginary line, which doesn't really exist, we use a dotted line to show it. You will remember from grade 10 that the hyperbola and exponential graphs had asymptotes. The hyperbola and exponential graphs approach and get very close to the asymptote, but they never touch it or cross it. Do you remember that the domain is defined as all the possible x values for which the graph is defined? Good! If you remember that, then you will also know that the range is all the possible y values for which the graph is defined. Let's look at the definitions again. The domain is all possible x values for which the graph is defined. And the range is all possible y values for which the graph is defined. Now that we've covered the main terms we have to work with, let's get back to our main focus for this video. We need to revise what we have learned in grade 10 about certain type of functions, the parabola, hyperbola, and exponential. The quadratic function is known as the parabola graph. Remember that the equation of the parabola is y equals a x squared plus q. a determines the shape and q results in the vertical shift and is thus the y-intercept. If the value of a is greater than zero, in other words, positive, then the parabola is an upwards concave shape. We remember it as it has a happy face. If 
the value of a is less than zero, in other words, negative, then the parabola concaves down. We will remember it as, it has a sad face. The value of q results in the vertical shift. If q is positive, then the graph shifts q units up. If q is negative, then the graph shifts q units down. We can write the domain of the parabola as x is an element of real numbers. Another way of writing this is x lines between negative and positive infinity. Note that we use a round bracket. We write the range of a concave up parabola as y is greater than or equal to the value of q. Another way of writing this is y lies between q and positive infinity. Note that we use a square bracket now to show that the value of q is included. We write the range of a concave down parabola as y is less than or equal to the value of q. Another way to write this is y lies between negative infinity and the value of q. You'll find a table that lists all these effects in the series guide called A Guide to Advanced Algebraic Functions. Now we will summarize the hyperbolic function covered in grade 10. The hyperbolic function is called the hyperbola graph. In grade 10, we learned about the hyperbola in the form of y equals a over x plus q. a determines the shape of the hyperbola and the quadrant in which it lies. The value of q determines the vertical shift. Let's see. If the value of a is positive, then the graph lies in the first and third quadrants. And if the value of a is negative, then the graph lies in the second and fourth quadrants. Hyperbola graphs have two axes of symmetry. The equations are y equals x plus q and y equals negative x plus q. Let us look at the domain and range of the hyperbola. We say the x is an element of real numbers, but it cannot equal zero. This is because x equal to zero is the vertical asymptote. Similarly, y is an element of real numbers, but y cannot equal to q, because this is the horizontal asymptote. I'm sure this knowledge is flooding back. Now we have one last function to revise. Yes, you've probably guessed it, the exponential function. Let's take a look. The exponential graph has the standard equation y equals a times b to the power of x plus q. Remember that b must be positive and that it cannot be equal to 1. The value of a and b provide us with the shape of the graph and tell us whether the graph lies above or below the asymptote. Remember the asymptote of this graph is y equals to q. This means that the value of q will move the graph up and down. If a is positive and the value of b is greater than 1, then the graph is said to be increasing and above the asymptote. If a is positive but the value of b lies between 0 and 1, in other words, b is a fraction, then we say that the graph is decreasing and lies above the asymptote. Now, let us look at what happens when the value of a is less than 0 and b is greater than 1. If a is less than 0, in other words, it's negative and b is greater than 1, then the graph is a decreasing function and lies below the asymptote. Lastly, when a is less than 0 and b lies between 0 and 1, then the graph will be an increasing function and lie below the asymptote. Notice that when a is more than 0 or positive, the graph lies above the asymptote. And when a is less than 0 or negative, the graph lies below the asymptote. When b is more than 1, it looks like the graph is curving away from the asymptote. And when b is between 0 and 1, it looks like the graph is curving towards the asymptote. Let's move on to the domain and range. 
From the graph, it is easy to see that the domain includes all the values of x. This is written as x is an element of real numbers. The range of the exponential graph depends on the asymptote, thus the q value. If a is positive, then y must be greater than the value of q. If a is negative, then y must be less than the value of q. Well done, grade 11s. That was a thorough recap of our grade 10 algebraic functions. You will now be able to deal with the rest of the videos in our grade 11 function series. Remember to try the task video at the end of this series. You'll also be able to learn more about functions on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, grade 11s. Goodbye.